Hi, this is Dennis Sargent. I'd like to talk to you this afternoon about affinity grouping and prioritization. It's how we begin to sort the many choices we have into priorities for action. This is the first in a series of two. When do we use affinity grouping? Well, we use it after brainstorming. We use it when we have a variety of choices and a high volume of ideas. We use it when we have many similar ideas and when we need to prioritize. We start by prioritization with the SMEs. Subject matter experts, after brainstorming, can be faced with many choices, and we have dozens of great ideas to sort through. We ask those subject matter experts who created the ideas to sort the ideas by a prioritization matrix that essentially sorts their ideas with their best ideas by effort and impact. We ask them to think about the effort level and the impact level and to think about whether it's high effort or low effort, high impact or low impact. We create a grid and we ask them when we have these multiple ideas to take every single idea they've created in brainstorming and post it on this kind of grid. It's relatively simple and it requires only two decisions by them. What's the level of impact and what's the level of effort? Before we do any affinity grouping, we do some prioritization using this method. After we've looked at where they stay on this grid, we then decide that the highest priority is going to be the ideas that are in that first quadrant that's low effort and high impact, the upper left. Then we take the visual of all the priorities that are there. In this example, we've got 25 choices. We've got a wide variety. We need to sort and prioritize them further. We ask the subject matter experts again who created them to begin to group the ideas together that are similar into affinity groups. These similarities may be sorted as you see here. This is the exact same 25 sorted into six different categories. We can label those by process, technology, customers, suppliers, training, and employees. We could also think about sorting them another way. We could have a subject matter expert group look at them completely differently the exact same ideas by a different group of people might be sorted differently. But we take the group that we have and we ask them to sort them. Again, we ask the group after they've sorted them to label the affinities. Here we have six affinity groupings. Process, technology, management, employees, suppliers, and customers. So with the subject matter experts deciding, a facilitator will ask two questions about the pairs of grouped ideas. First, is there an influence between the pair? And second, what is the greatest direction of influence? Then we draw an arrow to show the direction of greatest influence. The answer to the first question is that yes, there is an influence between employees and suppliers. The second question if there is a yes to that question, is to then talk about the directionality. If employees to suppliers is the greatest influence, then we draw an arrow point at the end of that line to show the direction of greatest influence. And we continue clockwise around the groupings until every pair has been compared. You can see, for example, that as we go from employees to customers, management, technology, and process, that we have different directionality. Employees have influence greater to suppliers and customers, but on the other hand, process, technology, and management has greater influence on employees. We continue that circuit around, and ultimately we end up with influences that are depicted from every group that has an influence and that has the direction of the influence. We'll continue this exercise in the next lesson on interrelationship diagraphs or what we use a shorthand for and we call them affinity diagraphs.
It's an opportunity for us to think about the data that we gather from every process, every team or organization. We check the documented issues and priorities. This is drawn from the improvement opportunities that are suggested by the subject matter experts. And we take more than five to six ideas and group them by affinity and prioritize them by this interrelationship digraph. That's the second section of this series. We save all input, all ideas for later use to make sure we have captured all these great ideas that have been created by the subject matter experts. We also make sure that we take a photograph of them before we start to document them digitally, just in case somebody loses the notes. And then our action items and priorities are determined next. I wanna thank you for your kind attention. We would look forward to any questions you might have, any issues that you might have and need help. You're welcome to call me at the phone number shown or email me at my email address, dsurgent at surgentresults.com. Thank you.